Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about five reasons why you should use a tiling window manager. Now, when I say you should use a tiling window manager, I'm not really going to pressure you into doing it. What you use on your system is a very personal choice. That's why we have the term fanboy or fangirl, because if you enjoy what you like to use, there's really no problem with it. If you're a, a GNOME person, more power to you. GNOME's not for me. If you're a Plasma person, more power to you. I love Plasma. I'm just not going to use it because, you know, it has a lot of dependencies in it. And that's basically the same with whatever you use. If you're a DB, if you're a suckless guy, like, you know, I seem to be, have become good for you. If you're an I3 guy or BSPWM or uh, whatever, use what you like to use. But if you've been thinking about using a tiling window manager and you haven't used one or just started or something, I thought I'd go through five of the reasons why I think tiling window managers are the bomb. No one actually says that anymore. I don't know why I still do. It's probably because I'm still stuck in the 90s. What was it the 2000s? Man, I'm old. <laughs> Anyways, uh, five reasons why you should use a tiling window manager. So... The first one is that when you navigate through a tiling window manager, you're always going to be using your keyboard. Now, you can use your mouse, obviously. I could use my mouse and go up here and change workspaces and, you know, go to all my workspaces like that. But that's not great. Every once in a while, you'll see me on video that I do that. That's just because I was apparently conditioned to use a mouse by, you know, Windows and Mac OS. But really, the best way to do it is mod plus, you know, say, 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, or 7. And that's just the way you you navigate through workspaces. And if you want to open up Terminal, Super Enter it, on my system. You know, Super Q to quit. Super Enter and Enter, Enter to open up a whole bunch of terminals. It's Let's say I wanted to switch these things around, and I could do it that way. With an, a simple key binding. I like that because it means I don't have to drag windows around. I don't have to use a scroll wheel if I don't want to. Like even in my browser here, I have it set up so I can go up and down with a key with my keyboard. And I can click click a link with a you know, if I wanted to go to a video here. I could just do it that way. Using a keyboard just seems more efficient to me. It also means that you're use, you're moving your wrists around less. So if you have, you know, repetitive stress injuries, carpal tunnel or whatever, you don't have to worry so much about moving your mount, your hand around so much with your mouse. And I do have those kinds of problems. And using a keyboard has helped with that, especially because I have this, I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, I'm not sure which camera I'm actually on. I can't remember. <laughs> I, I always look at the wrong camera. I really, seriously, I don't need a third camera because it'd be even worse. Anyways, I have a, like a wrist rest and it makes my wrist better. Uh, anyway, so that's number one. The second one is low resources. Now I can't show you what DWM uses out of the box because I have a bunch of stuff running right now, but in terms of resources, it's less than any desktop environment out there, almost guaranteed. I mean, I'm talking about maybe two or three hundred megabytes out of the box, and that's pretty much every tiling window manager out there. Even floating window managers will use less resources than a desktop environment because every desktop environment has some things that run in the background, whether it's a, you know, a plank bar or you know, a settings manager or a something. You know, there's always something that it has running in the background. Now. While desktop environments have gotten a lot less resource intensive in recent years, so like GNOME is not nearly as resource intensive as it used to be, but it still will take about a gig. Uh, Plasma takes about half of that, around 500, depending on what distro you're running, and that even that's a little bit more than what a desktop or a window manager would would take. So if you're on a low system, you could just use you know, a window manager, and you wouldn't have to deal with all those things that take up system resources. You can use them for other things like your browser or your games or whatever. The third reason is that it has the best window. I mean, this is 
like really weird to say, but it has the best window management of any system out there. So when you're in a, in a floating window manager or you're in a desktop environment, you have to go through and drag your windows to where you want them. Every once in a while, you'll come across a desktop environment that has key bindings that you can, you know, shove a window off to each side or a quadrant or something like that. But it's not front and center. It's not how it's meant to be used. It's meant to be used with a mouse dragging things around. Tiling window managers always start full screen. So you open up one app, you have it full screen. You open up a second app, they're split in the middle. Now, DWM is a little bit different where one gets a, a little bit more bigger percentage than the other. You can change that. I just didn't mind it, so I left it this way. Same thing, and each window you open takes up a certain part of the screen. Now, depending on what window manager you're using, the layout may be different, whatever. That's just that's more of a personal preference of which one you want to use or which one works better for you. In this case, if I just wanted to move one of these around, let's uh, clear clear here and open up HTOP or something. I don't know. I can move this over to the. I can move this into the main stack by you know a, a keyboard binding, a, a key binding, and it's just really simple. It's always going to take up a, a, a part of the screen that you can predict. I always know where the next window is going to land when I press you know enter because it's always at the bottom of the stack, or in you know bottom of the the tree is what is what they call it. So. Basically, what this means is that there's no hunting for that. You can have a, a a desktop on a or a whole bunch of windows on a desktop environment all open at the same time, and you got to kind of drag you know your mouse through each one trying to fit which one you want, or you have to have a panel or something that has all your open windows on it or whatever. You don't have to do that in a tiling window manager because they're all right in front of you. Now, every once in a while, I'll lose a window, but I can do something like Alt P. Yeah. This is Rofi, and this allow, shows me every single window that I open. It's kind of like Alt Tab for, you know, Windows or Mac or whatever. Uh, you know, this just shows me all the windows I have currently open. I have a ton of windows open, which is crazy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's number three. Number four is there's no cruft. So by cruft, I mean you know extraneous dependencies and software things that you don't really need in a, in a tiling window manager. You could, you know, things like software centers or uh, power management systems or, you know, whatever. Usually in a, in a tiling window manager, all you really need, I mean, absolutely have to have is a terminal and maybe a compositor if you want, you know, nice window effects, but you don't even have to have a compositor like PyCom. Literally, that's all you need. You don't even need a bar if you don't want one. I mean, VWM comes with a bar. Xmonad doesn't come with a bar. There are many window managers that don't come with bars, you know, if you wanted to go uber minimalist. So it's really, window managers are, they only have in them what you put in them. So if, like, I have PyCom going, I have a bar, uh, you know, whatever, I have all these things, but the, there are things that I've built into them. I mean, the bar comes with this, but I've gone through and customized it or whatever. So, whereas with a desktop environment, you really have to put up with what other people consider important. So with like KDE, you have all these, uh, you, you're going to get all the K-Suite stuff probably on every distro. You may never use them. You're going to get all these settings applications that you may never use um, and that you wouldn't necessarily need if you were just, you know, controlling everything through the terminal or whatever. When you're using a window manager, you get a lot less of the, the extraneous stuff that makes a desktop environment a desktop environment instead of just a window manager itself. The last one I want to talk about is workspaces. Now, every desktop environment that I know of on Linux has workspaces. Even Windows now has a workspace feature, and Mac OS has workspaces. But when I used desktop environments before, I didn't really use workspaces. I was always just had my two monitors, and you know, when I needed a window out of the way, I'd drag it over with a mouse and put it on the other screen or whatever, and or you know, just change focus or whatever. I didn't use workspaces. They were there, but I didn't use them. With tiling window managers, at least for me, I've found that I use workspaces often. So right now I have windows on one, two, three, four, and six on my my main monitor. On 
my other monitor, I have on one, two, three, six, eight, and nine. So I have windows on every single one of those. Now, some of them are terminals, like on three here. Uh, I usually keep a couple terminals open for various reasons. Sometimes they have like a BPI top on, you know, open. If I don't have it, you know, in a scratch pad, uh, I always have on my other screen. I have my to-do list and Zim open all the time. I have my mail on another workspace, and on on I have Notion on on another space, and file manager on eight, and Discord and Telegram on nine. So I mean, I use workspaces like crazy on on window managers, whereas before I just didn't. There's something about the way you can't get windows to go away. Like, technically, if I wanted these two windows to not tile anymore, if I wanted to use them in full screen, both of them, I could do that in monocle mode. I could do that. And then I could have like a whole bunch of windows all in the same workspace. I could do that. And it doesn't have to all be terminals. It could be a, a web browser as well. You know, and um, I don't know, I could have WhatsApp open as well. I mean, I just have all these windows and now I have them all open on the same workspace. I could do that, but it's messy. You know, it, it's just not all that great. Instead, I just have them all open, you know, in a tiling window manager format and use different workspaces. So, you know, I can have my ter two terminals open here and all the other stuff open on different workspaces and then navigate between them with key bindings. And it just is more efficient because I know where things are. I'm very, my second monitor is almost always exactly the same. It has Todoist and Zim on one workspace, Mail on the other, Notion on another, so on and so forth. Workspace 6 on both monitors is always one's Audacity, one's OBS. That way I always know where they are. Whereas with desktop environments, especially like GNOME, you ha it's hard to go to a specific workspace. Now, like I know in KDE, you can go through and set your own key bindings to go to a certain workspace. And you can set activities and stuff like that. It's all very complicated. This is just so much simpler and it's so much more efficient for me. And I think it is for a lot of people just because it gives you more flexibility on where you put your windows, but it also is harder to lose them because you're not stacking them on top of each other. They're always visible and in, in your face. So that is why I think window managers are awesome. Now, there are definite pros to using desktop environments. There are certain applications that I miss using DWM. So for example, for whatever reason, DWM does not come with Polka Agent installed or running it, you know, by default, which means anytime I want to burn a, a, a ISO on a USB key using like Etcher, I have to run it via terminal via sudo. I can't expect that to run because there's no Polka Agent. There, it, there's nothing there to ask for my password. Now I could set up something to have it run. But that's something that I would have to do. That's not something you have to do in a desktop environment. That's just something that I've missed. Same thing with managing other auto start applications. A lot of times there are applications that I want to start by default that will actually put themselves in auto start mode. So something like Dropbox will start automatically in most desktop environments. But with window managers, you actually have to explicitly say, hey, I want this to start. Another thing that I've missed is the the little icons that go up in the bar. Um, I don't know, whatever they're called. The ta task bar, task manager, whatever. I don't know. Uh, the, one, the ones that allow you to quit Dropbox. So like right now, if I wanted to quit Dropbox, I'd have to run a terminal and say, kill all Dropbox. Or run HTOP and do the you know F9 or F4 or whatever and find it and kill it that way. There's no going up to that icon and just quitting, setting, selecting quit. That's just, I mean, you can get that obviously there's a way to put that in your bar in almost every window manager uh, i just haven't because it seems extraneous and then what would i complain about really <laughs> so in the comments below i'd love to hear what window manager you use or why you don't use a window manager or what desktop environment you use that's kind of keeping you from using a window manager so uh, leave a comment below i love the conversations we have if you'd like to have conversations on other 
networks. You, you can find us on Twitter at twitter.com slash linuxcast, facebook.com slash linuxcast. You can also support the channel by subscribing or hitting the notification icon, bell, or both. You can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, where you'll find all sorts of different perks, including exclusive blog content, early access to our podcast episodes, and eventually some of our videos. You can also find monthly AMAs, which I'm hoping to kick off this month, but it might end up being next month. I'm not exactly sure. I'm still working on how I want to go about doing that. So with that in mind, let's thank our producers, Demon, Marcus, and Merrick. Thanks for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.